Coming up, the off-grid Mamba V3, the Jack Wolf Knives Bionic Jack, and 12 great discreet fixed blades for utility and defense. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. One of my favorite comments from this past week was from Cody Broadway, 8496, who says uh, on the Off Grid Knives interview show, he says, I so badly want a straight clip point came in. I'm going to get the XL and the XXL as soon as I can afford it. But really, I want a straight clip. Love that Off Grid makes good slicers with a low tip clip point. Uh, wish I found this company sooner. Uh, I'd have bought less knives I don't use. Uh, that last line, I wish I found this company sooner, I'd have bought less knives I don't use. Uh, to me, that is a, a great compliment. Uh, you hear that and, um, well, I'm sure it must make uh, Kerry of uh, off -grid Knives feel good because um, his knives are cool and people like to use them, myself included. I'm always touting them as some of the best uh, slicers, folding slicers, out there. So uh, thanks, Cody Broadway, for your comment. And thanks, one and all, uh, for watching, commenting, subscribing, etc. All right, that's it. Let us get to a pocket check. What's in his pocket? Let's find out. Here's the knife junkie with his pocket check of knives. In my front right pocket today, I had the Boker Squail. Now I'm uh, in, in my I've been carrying pretty much exclusively flippers because my forefinger right now works better than my thumb. But as my thumb comes back online, yes, I keep talking about it. And as my wife and most women say, men are such babies when they're injured or sick. But I'm just I'm just letting you know uh, when you when you damage your right thumb and the nerve in your right thumb and it feels funny, it really does affect your fidgeting and your use of uh, a lot of modern knives that use the thumb a lot. So anyway, this one has a nice big egg shaped opening hole. I love this knife, by the way, this is the production version of my ultimate grail folding knife, uh, anything from uh, Charles Marlowe, but definitely the squail. This is my favorite of his models. And uh, he's definitely catches catch can. His stuff is very, very valuable, inexpensive, infrequent. And I just don't think he makes a lot of them. And he spends a lot of time on them and they're outstanding. So this is probably the closest I get to a Charles Marlowe in this here uh, uh, body. So I love this knife. And I figured that big lozenge, that big shaped op opening hole would uh, help me with my thumb just in the slow roll, trying to get out of the uh, relying on the middle finger flick and the forefinger uh, flipper. Because uh, as all of you have been very helpful, a lot of you guys have damaged your thumbs too. And you say you got to suffer through the nerve uh, pain and stuff. And that'll bring you back online eventually. And that's what I'm hearing uh, both medically and from you all. So thank you so much. All right, next up uh, from American Blade Works, this is the slip joint, very, uh, very uh, direct and to the point in the name, uh, naming of this. It is the American Blade Works slip joint and man alive. This is an awesome, awesome knife. Uh, this is the first, um, slip joint from American Blade Works. It was really beautifully done, very uh, very nicely priced. That's MagnaCut, super thin hollow ground MagnaCut. Uh, you can see right there that deep hollow grind in the reflection uh, on the blade, just so nice and slicey and cutty and good looking. The handle also feels great. This is titanium and you've got a, a traditional style um, well, you do have a, a a stop pin. Oh, no, no, that's a kick. I'm sorry. There's a kick. So this truly is a traditional slip joint in that it doesn't use a stop pin to stop uh, the blade from hitting the frame. It uses this, the kick, that part of the Ricasso that flares out and stops the blade from making contact. Anyway, I love this knife. I love carrying this in my pocket, uh, not just uh, in a slip. I mean, I don't, I prefer to just have this naked in the pocket is what I mean. No slip for this one. It is small, light, and discreet enough that I drop it in the pocket, even if it rides horizontally at the bottom of my pocket, it doesn't bother me uh, just due to the size. All right, next up, 
I had a, a uh, fixed blade on me as usual, and that was the, as usual, uh, t -Kill Knives Agent 001, one of my most carried knives, and, uh, you know, I just love this one. I know that they're doing a drop again real soon, I think, like, tomorrow or whatever, but, well, okay getting ahead of myself. I'm not sure when you're listening to this. Uh, you could be listening to this years in the future, but uh, this is coming out in mid-October of 2024, and I know that he's going to be drop. Uh, he, meaning Tim Kell of TKL Knives, they will be dropping um, a bunch of different models uh, here real soon, and this is one of them, and I'm excited about that, of course. Uh, the more Agent 001s that get in, on the belts of good citizens, the better. For sure. Love this thing. He does such an awesome job in making and designing knives. Also, just a fantastic human being. And uh it's good when you it's good when you come across those. I mean, I know a lot of fantastic human beings, which is awesome. Uh and he's one of them. Okay, next, my emotional support knife, my ESK today. Uh, I'm trying to make it happen. I'm trying to make it happen. Uh, this Shielden Empoleon. I really do like this knife. Uh, I, I I take exception. I'll, I'll say the one little nitpick. I don't like it's purely aesthetic. Uh, I don't like the little unnecessary kind of texture on the uh, nicely contoured handle scales. I would just go with the nicely contoured, contoured handle scales. 3.7 inch blade here. It's a really, really nice knife. It it cuts so well. I mean, I got to admit, uh, they well they sent this to me. Shielden sent this to me, and when I opened it up, I was like, okay, I'm definitely the the least excited about this of the three that they sent. And lo and behold, it's the one I carry the most. Uh, I got to say, the flipper uh, added something to that because I'm, I need a flipper, needed a flipper recently, and um, but the blade, I kept coming back for that blade. Yes, it's a generic drop point kind of. But look at that shape. Thanks, Jim. Look at that shape over the dark of the pattern, uh, the dark of the of the um, leather there. It just has a really nice shape. That drop point puts the um, point right at the center line. If you look at the at this um, body screw here and the pivot and then the point, they're all in a straight line, uh, which is a great place to have the point. And then you've got a nice belly up front, but a long uh, straight portion. Something about that blade, it hits all the right, uh, hits all the right proportions for me for an excellent drop point. So, and it's sharp, it's D2, it's got great action. And I've just found myself picking it up and carrying it. And I haven't done a review on it. And I think I will be doing that shortly because uh, now I've actually carried it and I have great things to say about it. And I've used it, I've marred the, the tip up a little bit, but uh, nothing, no damage. Um, and so I have got a little bit of time on it and I'm excited to actually talk about it, not just say, Shielden sent me this, it's really cool, which was the, the first review because I couldn't wait to review it, the Bulbasaur. Because I remember when it came out, I made fun of the name, um, but when I had it in hand, I was like, this thing's awesome. Um, but this one, a little less glamorous, um, is the one I end up carrying the most. Okay, this is what I had in my pocket. Look at the difference between the Agent 001 and the Boker Squail. And note that this is just evidence that you can carry a fixed blade knife. Okay, you can carry a fixed blade knife. Look at the size difference. Now, this is a three inch, three and a half inch blade. That's a four inch blade, but it does here. If I move it over, you'll see. Um, but that half inch does make a difference. This, of course, we don't need a longer handle to accommodate the, the blade. Of course, we do have a longer handle because we can afford the space. Uh, but all I'm trying to say here is if you think you can't carry a fixed blade knife, chances are you're wrong. All right. Uh, Shielden uh, Empoleon uh, TKL Knives Agent 001, or uh, yeah, 001. I had the uh, um, uh, American Blade Works slip joint and the Boker Squail. Let me know what you had on you. I always like hearing that. Just drop it in the comments below and let me know. And let me know why you carry what you carry and what you like best and why you're carrying that. That uh, is always of interest. Uh, also of always of interest, Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway Knife. And the one this month is very special, beautiful, new knife from Off Grid Knives. This is the Magna Cut. Uh, Magna Cut and Titanium um, 
uh, Mamba V3. Sorry, guys, a little, little, little brain freeze there. The Mamba V3, we've uh, shown off the Black Mamba, the V2, uh, which is a three and a quarter inch version. Well, this is a full four inch blade, and man, it's awesome. A nice thin blade stock for that size blade, nice broad. Uh, modified Warncliffe, modified because, well, it's this shape. It's a reverse Tonto, basically. Uh, very, very nice slicer, very nice cutter, wickedly sharp. Um, this one we are giving away. It's a, a black titanium frame lock, deep carry pocket clip, awesome action. We are giving this away with uh, a really great bit driver, also by Off Grid. And I have the V1 version of this. This is the V2 bullet. And it's got incredible uh, action there. It's kind of like a, a fidget spinner on top of the fact that it's a really, really nice uh, tool. Comes with the three most used um, uh, bits there, and you're good to go. So uh, these two are going to one lucky gentleman junkie next week. That's October 7th. Uh, that next week. By next week, I mean tomorrow. Sorry. Um, <laughs> October 17th. 2024 we will be giving these away to one lucky gentleman junkie so uh go to the knife junkie.com slash patreon and sign up if you want to get this uh it's a great great knife to be given away i'm excited i'm really excited about this one because honestly i've been carrying this other one that he sent in the package quite a bit and i love this knife i really like the mamba v3 probably it's probably uh, my favorite of the folding off grids at this point. It is sort of eclipsed uh, the XL uh, Cayman, which I love because look at that Bowie with the whole overall package of uh, the Mamba. It's awesome. All right. So that's Gentleman Junkie Knife giveaway knife uh, coming up for you tomorrow evening or on October 17th, 2024. All right. Coming up knife life news but just to remind you if you want to help support the show and uh, be privy to uh, giveaways such as the one you just saw go to the knife junkie.com slash patreon check out the different uh, levels of support and uh, thank you very much for those of you who do that uh, if not just watch like comment subscribe share the damn show uh, and you can also scan that qr code all right we're coming up with life knife news right after these messages adventure delivered your monthly subscription for hand-picked outdoor, survival, EDC, and other cool gear from our expert team of outdoor professionals. TheKnifeJunkie.com slash BattleBox. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. One of the best new looking folders I've seen in a long time. That's the best looking new folders I've seen in a long time is from Ray Laconico. And that happens a lot. I really like Ray Laconico's aesthetic. I only have one thing. I think no, I have nothing by him anymore, actually. Um, but I love the, the simple design, simple, graceful, beautiful. Like I was talking about the Empoleon blade, just hitting all the right ratios. That seems to be Ray Laconico's thing. Um, I've tried to have him on the show, and I will reach out to him again. Maybe he wants to come back on. Who knows? Or maybe he wants to come on. Uh, when I asked him last time, he's like, thank you, but no thank you. Um, but very nice guy, and what a designer. What a maker. Uh, look at this thing. This is beautiful. This is his first uh, collaboration with Vostid, and they know how to make an awesome folding knife. Well, here they have a titanium and S35VN clip point uh frame lock just a gorgeous clip point that is like a a perfect clip point uh sometimes we talk about the perfect clip point like uh, the uh, the 110 from buck that is a perfect clip point or the or the recon one by cold steel there's a perfect clip point right there the the western w49 well here you go this is a perfect clip point i think it's beautiful uh luckily it's only three inches long uh so i can avoid getting this if this were four inches uh, it would be a moral imperative for me a nice neutral profile those are contoured titanium handles 2.6 ounces which is uh pretty light you know that's it used to be an ounce per inch of blade i don't i don't know if people still talk about that anymore um but 2.6 ounces pretty light available soon so i'm not sure when that is uh but keep your eyes peeled i think it's gorgeous and i love this uh 
uh, light blue, gray, ghost gray sort of anodized titanium handle. <coughs> Pardon me. And the black clip point blade. I think it looks so cool together. So very cool. Next up. From Parade 365, Patrick Ma's company, and Daryl Castellan of D-Rocket Design comes the CAS Auto. CAS stands for California Special. And you'll know when you see the picture why it's called the California Special. That's right. 1.9 inches of Teravantium uh, is the blade. First of all, I got to say, you don't hear me say this too often, but a very beautiful, well, I guess you heard me say it once before today, but a very beautiful drop point on this, uh, on this knife, something about the swedge and something about the lighting, I guess, uh, really nails it, but cool looking knife. So, uh, and it's sort of tame Daryl cast, cast, cast down if you ask me. Um, but, but really nice nonetheless. I really, really like the look of this little tiny 1.9 inch teravantium bladed um, uh, aluminum or titanium automatic. Uh, and in that sliding button on top, there's an ultra, what do they call that? Ultra glow, I think, a bit of uh, like a tritium type insert. And uh, so pretty cool little thing, 100% rust resistant is teravantium because i know you heard me say teravantium and some of you may have said what the hell is that uh teravantium is their dendritic cobalt alloy uh that is uh, a uh proprietary to terrain 365 so it's 100 percent rust free uh because there's no well it's a it's a cobalt alloy and all that that implies there there goes my chemistry degree okay this thing will be available soon of course that's an auto out the front if i hadn't mentioned it and if you don't have eyes or are just listening uh really cool comes in four colors it'll be a gray a black a green and a purple all right next up is from civivi now they've come out with a bunch of cool uh new knives this season and one of uh, two of them so far have been fixed blades and i love civivi's fixed blades and uh this one is the second. It's the Zatumi. It's an in-house design. Uh, it was also introduced and shown off at Blade Show West in um, prototype form. 4.3 inches of Nitro V. And according to uh, Ben Schwartz at Knife News, that puts this knife squarely in the outdoor companion category, which I like. I didn't even know there was an outdoor companion category, but I like it. That's a perfect, um, perfect description description of this knife yes of course you could carry it and use it as a tactical fighting knife uh but it's not that kind of knife it's a, it's more of a four inch kind of uh, uh do everything in the outdoors kind of knife or is it i don't know those speed holes that that accommodates a quick grip change pretty quickly and i don't know that belly is pretty good for slashing but they put the the point right in the in the middle there so easy to access and then there's a big long swedge great for puncturing so I don't know. See, that's what I love about Civivi fixed blade knives. They uh, they definitely walk the line between, yeah, you want to carry this in the woods? Go for it. It'll be great. Oh, you want to carry this uh, as a little self-defense tool? It would also be great. So that's what I like because that's where my aesthetics lie. Uh, so cool new knife. Um, this one has that skeletonized handle, full tang uh, with the lightning holes, G10, and 6.5 ounces with a pancake Kydex sheath. Now, the article says pancake and the press release says pancake, but I'm looking at a taco sheath on screen. So who knows? Maybe it's a taco. Maybe it's a pancake. Either way, you don't lose because they're both delicious. You knew that was coming. All right. No release date for this one yet. So keep your eyes peeled. All right. Lastly, Kaiser and you or Kaiser XU uh, design contest winner. Now, this was something that was uh, that they this was a design contest for fans of Kaiser uh, that came out in April to May 2023. And you could send in your version of how you would finish, how you would finish an unfinished knife design, you know, just the start. I think what they did was start with the, with the guts, like the pivot area and how it's going to uh, work mechanically. And then you come up with the design. Uh, so this is called the Bulldog uh, by a designer, first time designer named O Show. Uh, o period show and um, i think it's really cool it's called the bulldog and you can see why it looks uh, pretty aggressive but also like uh, a, a like it's going to be a pretty good worker because that's only a three inch blade 
it's not it's not meant to do I, I think it's much more of an EDC type blade. Uh, you've got jimping all the way uh, in the uh, finger swale uh, for the forefinger down below and then on the top of the blade leading up to the thumb ramp and on the thumb ramp and then once you go over the thumb ramp and there's that beautiful swale on the back of the blade well there's jimping there too so it's jimping galore and i love that um this one for me i mean i said it's not a self-defense knife but it looks like you could really use it uh, that way uh and it might accelerate that way uh very nice point placement you have a long uh sort of gradual belly there and an interesting sort of uh, offset angle on that modified Warren Cliff to the handle uh, kind of resembles a kitchen knife. It looks like you have some pretty decent knuckle clearance for any sort of uh, cutting motion that you would do on a surface like a cutting board. Um, of course, that also features the clutch lock there. That's uh, Kaiser's able, uh, not able, axis lock style bar lock. And um, it's coming in two different flavors. The one you see right here with micarta and a uh, satin blade, and then one that is aluminum with a pink with pink accents. So black aluminum knurled and such with uh, pink accents. Green micarta, 3.4 ounces, textured aluminum with pink, 4 ounces. A very cool looking knife. Congratulations to Osho. Uh, he, he <laughs> I love hearing this. I don't know if he's a he or a she, but uh, Osho started designing knives like a year before the contest so that's always nice to hear um beautiful knife love it all right let us uh go to the state of the collection we're going to check out talk about a beautiful knife this is a new one uh that came to me from jack wolf knives uh but before we get there i just want to remind you that another thing you can do on the knife junkie.com is search for really good merch and i'm not saying that we're coming up to the holidays but we're coming up to the holidays. Uh, I, I think I heard Mariah Carey on the wind. And I know that uh, I've already had my last day of shaving until next April. So uh, so it's time to start thinking of, of gifts. So we'll be anyway, we'll be coming up on, on the state of the collection. But you go check out the merch on the knifejunkie.com slash shop and check out. Maybe you're going to buy a T-shirt for someone. Maybe you buy a mug for someone or for yourself, because let's face it. We all need a little coffee to get through the day. All right, coming up right here, the state of the collection. The Shockwave Tactical Torch is your ultimate self-defense companion, featuring a powerful LED bulb that lasts 100,000 hours, a super sharp crenulated bezel, and a built-in stun gun delivering 4.5 million volts. Don't settle for ordinary. Choose the Shockwave Tactical Torch, the knifejunkie.com slash shockwave. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. I just got the new one from Jack Wolf Knives. Ben Belkin of Jack Wolf Knives just sent this to me, and uh, I'm so excited to show it to you. This is going uh, live on their website and all, all of the dealers' uh, websites on uh, this Friday, uh, October 18th. Um, 2024, you will be able to get this knife for yourself. I'm going to put this under the knife cam. This thing is a beauty. This is the new um, Bionic from Off Grid. Uh, uh, from I always start doing this from Jack Wolf Knives, and uh, you know Jack Wolf Knives. You know them well enough that uh, they've been making these incredible modern slip joints uh, for the past two plus years, and have begun to sprinkle into their releases these incredible folding versions of Ben Belkin's designs. And this one is a, a true original uh, Ben Belkin. Now, a lot of the Jack Wolf knives, most of the Jack Wolf knives uh, are uh, Ben's modernized takes on classic patterns. This is a pattern he came up with all on his lonesome. Uh, this sort of angled pattern, it looks very modern, sort of space age, and it looks... Uh, angular, but man alive, does it feel comfortable in hand, especially with these contoured scales, beautiful contoured scales, polished bolsters, and uh, this is frost fat carbon. I, man, I can never remember my fat carbons, but I think this one is frost called frost. Really beautiful fat carbon um, with the uh, just all the beautiful striations, the different uh, mixtures of color 
just looks so nice. And then these angular offset uh, asymmetrical bolsters are so cool. I love the way they look. Um, with the polish on them, they really pop out and um, are more apparent than they are on my other two models. Uh, the first one with green micarta, the second one, the mini in all titanium. So this one um, really shows off those bolsters with high contrast. And then here you have this beautiful swooping long clip, clip point blade with the machine, um, with the machine uh, nail neck there, machine cut neck. Is that what they call it? Machine cut, I think. Long straight and then a deep belly and an upswept tip. And then, of course, you have incredible action. Um, I am not as good at front flipping, but the front flipping is good. And uh, I love these little grooves on the side of the blade. These fullers are so perfect for the for the front flick or the, the middle finger flick. Now, I'm going to do this in front of my mic so you can hear it. This is the best sounding uh, Jack Wolf knife since the late night Jack. You hear that? Do that again. Or the after hours Jack. I'm sorry. One more time. Let's see if I can get it really ring. I don't know if the mic is picking it up, but it has a beautiful ting to it. And that is, uh, you know, it resonates through that super thin hollow ground S90 V blade, which happens to be hand rubbed and absolutely gorgeous. Uh, ships with a clip. And this comes in the typical tube with the two stickers. This one does not come with a leather uh, pocket slip. It is large. It is a uh, three point two five inch blade i believe uh yep 3.25 inch blade uh it is one of the big models and so those don't ship with uh with uh, a pocket slip instead they ship with a uh, tab filler filler tab there for the pocket clip in case you want to take the pocket clip off and then buy a leather slip to keep it in i love it i love these uh off-grid uh, flipper folders. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna show it with a couple of the others. Uh, this is the after hours. This is the Benny. So cool. That's the biggest. Uh, the beefiest. I mean, these two are the same size, but this one feels a little beefier, I guess. And then here is the sharpshooter. Uh, and then they've released this. He's released this one twice, and uh, I think that's it. So these things are stupendously awesome. They make for great front pocket carry knives. And it is a rare 3.25 inch knife that I say that about. Think about the Yojimbo and that's about it. So uh, this thing is awesome. I really love it. Uh, check it out on October 18th of uh, 2024. I got to say, uh, he has definitely increased access to the lock bar here uh, over, say, this one look at the difference there so there's a little bit of a divot in this one but this one he really widened it out so that's uh, pretty nice it's very easy to close this one i mean it's pretty easy to close them both but uh, if we're gonna look close and pick nits like we like to do uh, this one is slightly easier to close with that expanded access to the lock bar all right that is the jack wolf knives bionic jack in the cyborg family all right. Okay, let's talk about 12 great discrete fixed blades for utility and defense. Now, when I talk about discrete, I mean these are easy to wear uh, under the under a shirt uh, as a neck knife or in the waistband uh, at, or in the pocket or out in the open, but it's discrete so no one's going to care. There's one there's one in this category that especially uh, fits that bill. But let's start with Oh, and I want to say before we get into this, I, I was originally going to call it shivs, like 12 great shivs, because that's kind of how I think of most of these knives, uh, because they're small enough to keep stashed on your person. And if you needed to, you could you could use them for that. And uh, but I, I figured shiv is a inaccurate. These are not shivs. These are not you know, handmade knives in prison. And uh, that's a, it's become a colloquial term for small slender knives. Um, but also um, I don't want to give any of these knives like a bad reputation because they're all great, great tools and can be used as such. Uh, and, and so I just wanted to give that disclaimer. All right. First up from cold steel, 
the spike series. Now I'm going to show you two different spikes here because I have some from different eras, the two different eras. This is the current spike uh, type. So this is a faux G10 handle, uh, no mechanical connection. I think it's just epoxied onto that um, handle there, but full tang handle. And you just got this incredible sharp four. Uh, this is four one forty one sixteen Krupp steel, I believe. Uh, made in Germany and um, uh, the steel is made in Germany and it's that classic American Tonto point nice and thin super light this one is uh, you know 4.1 inch blade so a nice blade size I added that jimping on the spine it was easy enough to do with a with a, a small round file and I it just accentuates the grip because this is a very skinny grip and it, it you kind of have to curl it into your fingers and and it locks in for sure, but uh, it's a little bit harder to to hold on to, um, you know, when you're when you're hitting something hard with it, like wood, which is stupid to do, but I've done it. Um, you can use this uh, this sort of pinching um, saber grip, but with this knife, uh, I like this the best right here. Reverse grip is so good on this knife because you can go either way. It makes absolutely zero difference in your hand. Um, so this is of the current slash modern uh, rendition of the spike. Um, I think retooled in about 2016, they redid these, maybe earlier. And then this is an original from the original series. The original series ha had a very thin cordage wrap. Of course, I jute wrapped it. Uh, I had done. I've done all sorts of different wraps on this over the years, but uh, I've settled on this jute. It fills the hand nicely and, uh, you know, it's, I like it aesthetically. I like how it feels and it keeps it light, but grippy. So this was the Hawkbill spike. This one is great in reverse grip. Of course, it's very much uh, like a big call style knife like that. And uh, these are both great. They have great sheaths and it's the largest neck knife that I can carry and can carry comfortably. These also work Actually, I prefer these better in the waistband with this attached to a belt loop and then you just pull it out, uh, these things. But they can be worn around the neck if you got something to hide them. I feel like they're big enough to they need to be hidden. All right, this next one is a little, little, little knife, but it's definitely a self-defense knife. This is not one that would be of much other use. This is the Station 9 number 4 SOE lapel dagger. Uh, this was something that was very uh, common in the World War II era among, um, well, I don't know if it's very common, but it, it, this is a common knife design that we've seen from clandestine services during World War II. Uh, the SOE, and then I think they became the OS, no, the SOE, and then the OSS is what became the CIA. SOE was Special Operations in uh damn i forgot it what's the third word there people drop it in the comments but uh this is the station nine version of that lapel uh dagger and it has real sharp jimping uh that goes horizontally that acts as your grip now this knife would be very you could still wield it without that little fob but i like it with that little fob you can do different kinds of things with it um you can kind of stash it around your uh, ring finger kind of carry it like this pull it out stab now i've used this thing against a watermelon i tell the story because it was it's sort of an embarrassing story we had a watermelon sitting on our counter that someone brought over for a barbecue that never got eaten a couple of uh, summers ago and i was kind of you know it was over the week and i just hadn't cut it up and we hadn't used it and i walked by it and i kind of knew it was starting to get funky and i and i attacked it with this and um man it this did not this just went right in it's a very slender very sharp double-edged dagger blade but also you know an inch and a uh, inch and three quarters uh edge and a little bit more on the grip here so uh, you wouldn't think it would be easy in hand oh, i'm sorry the the cutting edge is two inches and then overall three inches so you wouldn't think that it would do much damage. It, it it put a lot of holes. It would not be something you would want to get stabbed in the neck with or anywhere with, uh, certainly. So uh, these kind of old, these kind of last ditch 
daggers uh, that were sewn into lapels and into pockets and and things uh, by spies and resistance people. Uh, I think it's so cool. I think these kind of little stashing knives are so cool uh, because I've read stories like of Colonel Fairbairn, for instance, who saved his own life with a tiny, tiny knife. He was like being marched to his own death in the desert and he killed his captor with a tiny knife uh, across the throat. And, you know, it's pretty cool. I, I shouldn't say the whole, you know what I'm, what I'm getting. What I'm getting at is that uh, these knives can be useful. You can be resourceful with them, uh, whether it's a tool or whether you're saving your life. Uh, so that aspect of it is cool. Getting cut in the throat, you know, not so cool. All right, next up is from Fudo Forge. And these guys make uh, incredible looking chef's knives. Uh, I've checked them out at Blade Show several times. This was an impulse buy at their table two years ago uh, at Blade Show. Well, last year, Blade Show 2023. And it's just like a little scalpel, little forged, wicked little scalpel. And um, I put the jute wrap on it, made the little sheath for it. And now I can just drop it in my pocket, pull it out and have a little knife ready to go. Uh, yes, of course. Yes, I am thinking of it like this because I have it set up so I could just pull it out of the pocket. And the, the sheath tugs on the pocket. And then I have this in my hand. And this drops back down in my pocket. Um, but you have no clip on the outside, no string coming out of your pocket, nothing that would uh, let anyone know that you have it in your pocket. Um, unless you're wearing super tight uh, skinny jeans, which I don't. Uh, so very, very sharp. Uh, it came it came pretty sharp. I've gotten this thing like stupidly, ridiculously sharp. Here's their logo, Fudo Forge. Um, I meant to tell them how much I love their little impulse buy from the year before when I saw them this year, but they were beset with customers and I never made it back to their table. Uh, but uh, they seem to be great, really, really nice chef, chef's knives. I'll tell you, they make a, a pretty damn good scrap knife too in this scalpel knife. Um, so go check out their website. They might have more of them. All right, next up, this one. Um, Knives by Nuge. It's been getting so much use uh, and carry by me. This is the Knives by Nuge Primitive Wicket. This is one of those knives uh, I was saying before. Some of these really straddle useful utility knife and useful weapony knife in a pinch. I know you're looking at this and you're thinking that thing is so uh, small. How could that be a good weapon? All right. Well, for a couple of reasons. Um, first of all, that. Uh, Two inch cutting edge is incredibly sharp. It's a Scandi edge, um, comes to that that zero zero edge there, and the handle is nicely broad. Yeah, it's a three finger handle for sure. And I haven't put a a fob a fob or lanyard on there for a reason. I I want this to remain discreet and small and something that I willingly joyfully carry against my skin under any shirt. And that's what makes it a great weapon, the fact that it's on me a lot. And I know it's there. Um, I do have reservations about whether neck knives make for good weapons because in a dynamic situation, like uh, being attacked or in a fight or whatever, this thing's going to be swinging around under your, even under your shirt and then actually accessing it. I've never had to access a, a neck knife under a shirt in duress. So that, that could be a major issue. But the fact that it's on you and comfortable enough to wear and it's a fixed blade and you tug it out you don't uh, need any um any micro manipulations like you do with opening uh, a folder you know you're in a high stress uh, situation and then lastly i have taken this and gripped it in my hand as such but in not in my left hand but in my right hand and done this thing uh, on a cardboard target where you jam it like in the leg area so low and then you just drop your weight and and it doesn't matter if you have a little bushcraft knife like this or a, uh, you know, a, a, a five inch fighting Tonto. It's a devastating uh, sort of thing. This knife, uh, if you needed to use it as a weapon, is so small, you could hide it in your hand and then do something like that. If if attacked, if grabbed uh, and um, make your way to safety. So I say the knife on you is is always the best. And this one will be on you a lot because it's so comfortable. Now, I. I rarely see the primitive wickets, primitive uh, being the jute wrapped version, but I see often uh, the wicket. He drops, uh, uh, Tom Nugent of Knives by Nuge drops the wicket a lot. Just follow him on Instagram. And then 
the bigger one, the XL. I would love to get that uh, just for just to have it because it's sweet. And they usually have Micarta and G10 on them. But uh, keep your eyes peeled for the primitive. I think they're awesome. I love it. I asked him if he's going to be doing an XL primitive. He said, yeah, probably coming up here soon. So <laughs> I will keep my eyes peeled. Love this thing. Absolutely love it. And it does straddle that line between utility and weapon. This this next one, I, I would say, does also. Though it's a Fred Perrin knife, and Fred Perrin is definitely a, a more of a combative type dude, a combatives type dude. Um, and his knives... Uh, Almost all of his knife, knives and knife design. You can see his handmade knives if you follow him on um, on Instagram. You can even buy some of his handmade knives. Uh, if you go to Arizona Custom Knives, I was just looking at a few the other day. Um, not, not for purchase, but just to see what they had. This is one of the ones made by Max Knives, a company out of France. Uh, Fred Perrin is French. He's a former French commando of some sort. And a very interesting guy. I've had a few conversations with him at Blade Show over the past few years. The last time it was with Zach Wingard of Wingard Wearables, and the conversation was very interesting uh, between the three of us. And uh, Fred Perrin very charmingly uh, did a martial arts move on me that was so cool. Uh, but, you know, I was in good hands. That's how it is when a master uh, does something on you. You don't fear. So, but it was cool. It was definitely cool. And uh, yeah, he could definitely kill me a thousand times till Tuesday and uh, and and walk away unscathed, no doubt. Uh, so this is his Le Bowie back knife, uh, neck knife. He does other Le Bowies. I love that. It's like Le Mew, Le Mew, Le Mew. You remember uh, Pepe Le Pew? Le Mew. The cat would always say Le Mew. Uh, so nice long uh, run of jimping here to go all the way up to the clip on this clip point you get really really nice um, uh, pressure on the thumb for pressure cuts and uh, great thrusting and uh, a center point on that clip point so very very nice knife super thin behind the edge this one is very very wafer thin um, that full flat ground on a on a broad and thin blade stock really comes to a nice cutting edge. It's a wicked slicer, this thing. And then this one, of course, has the G10 handle scales. Um, I'm not sure. I've been. I'm not sure if this uh, was put on after the fact or what. But what a great knife! Also, another uh, excellent carry system. Uh, knives by Nudes. His sheath is awesome. This sheath is awesome. Uh, so both very comfortable. Uh, this one not as comfortable against the skin though, with this G10 and the and the shape of that handle. All right, next up, this one is a full custom uh, from Dirk Pinkerton. This was a gift from him, and I'm forever grateful. It's such an awesome little knife. Uh, this definitely lands on that uh, defense side of things. Of course, you can use anything with an edge for utility up to a point. Uh, the same, uh, you like that up to a point, but you could do the same thing in reverse. And this one is sort of built for that reverse. Uh, many different ways to hold this double-edged dagger. Uh, it it almost looks like the cinquedilla with the the proportions of it. Just a very small one. Um, you can put it over your. This is one of my favorite ways to hold it, like this, just with the, with the um, blade emanating from the forefinger. It's so locked in there, and then you have this beautiful. These two beautiful um, GL Hansen and Sons G Carta scales there um, in that really small sort of coffin shaped handle it just locks into the hand so nicely. Um, so you can carry it, you can uh, wield it like this. You can wield it all sorts of ways. This uh, push dagger sort of way is cool. Uh, Dirk himself likes it best in reverse grip. Dirk's got bigger paws than I do. And I think his, to me, I feel like my, my dainty little pinky gets lost in that, in that, uh, in the finger hole there. But, uh, but you can still, I can still grip the handle to great effect and it's not going anywhere. Uh, that's his preferred, but definitely my preferred is on the forefinger. Uh, it just feels so locked in and it feels like, um, I could, I could use this from a lot of different, uh, angles like that. So very much like this knife. This one is, or love this knife, I should say. This is, what is this? Magna Cut, I believe this is in Magna Cut, though it's not labeled. There's Dirk's uh, maker's mark there. DP. Oh, there it is. All right. 
beautiful, beautiful blade by one of my absolute favorite designers, makers, and he's a stand-up dude as well. All right, next up, this one is uh, definitely on the utility end of things. Uh, I've had this one a long time. This one just got incorporated into a kit. So this one is now going to be riding. You know, I've been into these little survival kits lately, uh, building a haversack and building a little overnight bags. And, you know, I'm just having fun trying to not trying. I'm doing it now. Uh, but but making fires without lighters and coming up and making my own little fire starters and stuff. Anyway, it's been a lot of fun. So I'm taking a look at uh, some of my other knives that haven't gotten a lot of use because uh, they're less defensey and more um, outdoorsy. Not that I've been using the defense ones, but you know, I like to carry them more. But this is a great little three finger. That's why I have the fob on there. Three finger knife from Tops. This was from when they first started doing Scandi grinds. I think this may have been their very first. And uh, and then the Brothers of Bushcraft came out after that. And I think a Puko and stuff like that. But um, Tops is known for their Scandi grind that has a relief edge. And some people give them shit for it. Excuse the French. Uh, but I say, uh, I say it's nice because it, it takes off just a little bit uh, of the edge. It does keep it, it does make for a strong edge, I got to say. But I've never had a problem with my zero ground um, uh, Moras, though my Mora Model 2 dulls eh, somewhat quickly. Um, so I'm wondering if a relief edge on it would, would help, but I'm not going to do that on that knife. It works great on this knife, though. Uh, a beautiful, perfect little mini tops with all that that implies, meaning 1095 steel with the black traction coating, just smaller, and a, uh, a, a red liners and and uh, that tan micarta that's so signature to tops. Look at how much this one has sort of patina. Very nice micarta on this one. Has not gotten a lot of uh, carry, but it's gotten a lot of use just around this room. I feel like, and now it's going to go in um, a little fire starting kit uh, that I have created. It fits perfectly, and it's very nice for uh, feather sticking, this little knife. Got nice jimping here, too. Uh, I do suggest the fob. This one um, is set up for uh, neck carry, but um, I'm probably more likely to do that thing where you drop it in the pocket and have the cord come up over your belt. Okay, next up. This one is so cool. And still in print and pretty inexpensive. It's the CRKT Obaki. Uh, this one was designed by um, uh, Lucas Burnley. And it is uh, looks a lot, the blade looks a lot like his Quaken, his folding Quaken. Uh, just a, a beautiful Japanese-inspired knife. Or maybe not even Japanese-inspired, just a Japanese knife <laughs> that he designed and uh, CRKT made. He used to be a, does, I know he designs knives for them, but I think he used to be employed by them uh, as a full-time designer at one point. Um, very nice Japanese style cord wrap that just really feels great in hand. I always talk about the peaks and the valleys, the alternating peaks and valleys on Tsukamaki wrap. It really, really uh, traps the hand. It grabs the fat and the meat on your fingers and traps it in the valleys. And the peaks give you ridges to hold on to. It's so sure in hand. And you would look at this and probably think, no, I'm not going to thrust with this unless it's in reverse and I have a thumb on top. Uh, but no, you could thrust with this. Um, I, I guess I would hold it sideways to be most sure. Um, but there is a lot of gription on this guard-free handle. Uh, this one is, what is it? I think it's 8CR. 13 MOV or D2. I'm I'm not sure, uh, but very, very sharp. It's a hollow ground blade. Of course, that point you have there, this is a very easy to carry knife. So you could uh, carry this for both utility and defense. It would make for a great utility knife. Uh, it, it does look a little intimidating. I have to say with that acid wash splatter, it looks like blood splatter kind of on the blade. Uh, that's the one thing I'm not a huge fan of on this. Uh, but not it's not a deal breaker, obviously. Um, I'm not going to sand it off or anything. But uh, this might be a little intimidating. But, um, okay, great sheath, taco style, speaking of tacos. And then this little bead comes on it, which I think is cool. Not much of a skull guy, but that's pretty damn cool. That is metal 
of some sort. And I put that little knot. This is a great one for in the waist carry with the with the cord going onto a belt loop. I think that is what Lucas Burnley had in mind when he designed it. Uh, if you go look it up, uh, you'll see a video of him showing that off. Okay, next up. This one is another one from Fred Perrin. Surprise, surprise. He is one of the kings of small, discreet uh, fixed blade knives. This one is ultra discreet. This is my work badge. I took the badge out, but this is around my neck and under my shirt so I can buzz in to wherever I need to go at work. For some things at work, I have to have this on the outside. It's rare, uh, but sometimes I do. Hiding behind the card, which you know is there with my face and all that stuff on the back, is a this was a gift from Jock of Jock's Knife. Thank you, Jock, again for this thing. It is so cool. Uh, it is a true daily carry, at least five days a week. And um, it's the mini pick, the Perrin mini pick. Now I have it taped, so it's 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 on there with the cord. You can see that, but then I uh gaffer taped it here and then I, I gaff taped it here too once once this fell out in my shirt it was uh, dangerously uh it was just dangerous i could have it could have cut my belly or my chest uh, or it could have it was in a tucked in shirt it could have slipped all the way it could have gone all the way south to to lands unknown that i do not want a sharp object and okay so what this does is just keeps it in there so that doesn't happen again. Um, but what we have here is this discreet little little cutter. It's a nasty, nasty little finger ring cutter. And you can put it like this and do all sorts of swiping and nastiness with it. Or you could just have this on your desk and use it to open letters, use it to open up, you know, all those letters you get. Uh, I mean, bills and open up boxes or open up all sorts of stuff with this tiny little blade let's see how long that edge is how long that nasty little hooked edge is but uh fred Perrin designs a lot of these cool little uh oss style knives i mean there's there they remind me of modern interpretations of this kind of knife so very cool fred Perrin knives check out max knives out of france that makes them uh, but i want to measure how long this edge is it's an inch and an a quarter inch and an eighth that's an inch and an eighth long and you could still do quite a bit of uh, get off me kind of damage with this thing on your on your finger like this. But you know what? I've never tried it on this finger, oddly enough. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you put it on your middle finger, uh, it might take some doing. Uh, that's the one thing because it's got to go over the fat knuckle, and I have skinny fingers. Uh, but I can get over the middle finger, and that would be uh, pretty nice too. Uh, and it's got this little rudder down on the bottom to anchor it in your hand so it doesn't turn too much but i think that's best used pinched in the fingers like this and uh yeah, you put it all the way up past this knuckle you're kind of over committing uh but who knows what the situation is you might need to over commit i don't know i don't know uh, that's fred perrin's maker mark and that's the max knives maker's mark best of all it's very discreet and uh you know fits right there and it's a very nice and usable tool i don't have to use it much certainly not for self-defense but uh every once in a while it'll come in handy for something or other but uh, usually i've got three other choices on me uh, but that is a true edc at least five times a week all right next up is 100 percent on the utility side though is it is it according to ed calderon it might not be uh this is the mora knives eldris uh, yeah, Ed Calderon said more knives make for great fighting and self-defense knives. I don't think he was talking about this one, though. Uh, he could have been, but I don't think he was. Uh, I added the neck loop here, but uh, so it's tied off here and here. So you can alternate the size of the necklace. Uh, this Mora knife is shipped with this nice little Mora uh, ferro rod. So I just put a little... Um, ranger band on the sheath just to keep it from rattling around but i want to keep it attached to this neck you know neck loop here so that it doesn't get separated uh, i as you can see i will pull out the knife uh, i used it a lot oh, let's see 
oh, I, I somewhat cleaned the blade in the grass and then stabbed it in the ground a little bit. I was using it to desperately start a fire. Uh, this was uh, last night. Uh, it was my, my wife's birthday this weekend. And one of the last things we did was have a little fire, hang outside, have some drinks and just chill. And uh, I wanted to impress her by lighting the fire with, with this. And uh, ultimately, I, I went to a bigger ferro rod that was easier to hold my hand. This one was small and starting to <laughs> Oh my God, I'm not even going to admit it, but it was small and uncomfortable and I wasn't throwing enough sparks and the blade was getting all black and, and gunked up from the Farinesium. And I was like, oh no, this isn't going to, according to plan. So I ran in, got a better ferro rod, started up the fire and uh, went to town. But I really, really like this one. This one is a great little carving knife. I just started carving a uh, little spatula out of this nice piece of wood and uh, using this. It's just fun to get used to. You can get a full full four finger grip on it, but look at how small it is. It's a teeny tiny uh, blade at two inches long, two two and one sixteenth of an inch long, basically. You've got the uh, the compound ground blade, which is kind of unnecessary. At least I'm not sure why why they have it, but I guess it's kind of cool. Uh, but this is mostly what you get on a mora, more like this angle here, mora like this angle. And then this is a little uh, bead I got. Oh, man, I wish I remember. From someone who gave, was giving them away at Blade Show who does 3D printing of popular uh, of, of handle scales for popular folding knives. And I don't remember who they were, but thank you, guys. I finally found the perfect place for that uh, bead. So this is definitely a, a larger than some of these others in terms of its bulbous, you know, its girth and such. But it's a small one, and without all the extras on it, you can just drop it in your pocket. Um, you know, this thing doesn't have to be on here, this extra guard. Um, you don't need the ferro rod in, on here. You don't need this. You just drop this in your pocket and be super light and discreet and great for use. All right, second to last is the Copus Elvia, and I'm going to widen this one out to the fruit knife in general. Uh, you can go get a $12 Victorinox fruit knife. That does pretty much everything that this knife is going to do. I just love this knife. Uh, so that's why I'm showing this one off. This is the 154 CM and uh, injection molded uh, Grivery Copus Designs Elvia. This is a collaboration with Ed Calderon based on his fruit knife, uh, Pical knife concept. And um, it comes very thin and discreet with this awesome sheath that has the hook on it. And you can just drop it in your pocket, pull it out. That hook uh, grabs on the inside of your pocket at the seam and uh, stays in your pocket while you draw the knife and do what you got to do with it. Uh, I put an ulti clip on this one. I prefer to wear it in the waistband. Um, I had this wrap, this Japanese wrap done by Josh Mason of Bright for War Knives. He did such a beautiful job using that purple ray skin. Mm. So that really makes it fit the hand so well. Oh my gosh, this fits so well in hand, but I do have to say uh, it adds a lot of girth. So this is not as discreet as it once was. And that's kind of the point of this knife is the, how thin and um, discreet it is. Drop it in the pocket, doesn't print, but that's not what I'm doing and that's not what I need. And I just like it like this. So I would say the uh, Copus Designs Elvia and then on, on a greater angle of things if you if you don't want to wait around for the drop they only really drop on knives ship free and they do uh, uh, the occasional drop with um uh, copus designs so you got to wait around for these they just recently did a drop of this so if you can't wait don't wait don't want to pay the money you can you can go online and get a cheap victorinox like this heat up the handle and bend it like i did put a little uh, nook there and maybe something like and then you got this made this little sheath, drop it in the pocket. This all does the same thing. This lives in my car and gets a lot of use and then also gets stationed quite a bit. All right, last one. Uh, you probably know what this is gonna be uh, and uh, don't don't mean to make this so self-serving, uh, but the last one is the Agent 001 by uh, TKL Knives and me. And this one here that I'm holding up, I showed you before the double-edged version. Great for self-defense, obviously. Great fighting knife. Great uh, stashed uh, last-ditch weapon kind of knife. But you can also get it with a single-edged blade. And 
it becomes a totally different kind of knife. It's a, a utility knife. It's a, yes, it's still a fighting knife because it's got that shape and that swedge. It's still gonna, it's still gonna stab and puncture incredibly, but you can do a lot more with a single edge. I, I think, I think, yeah, this now can be a hunting knife. This, cause I think that grip is pretty nice. And uh, I know there are other agents in the agent series that will be uh, good for hunting as well. Uh, but this is just a great all arounder thin, with a, th a thin sheath that's about the width of the average belt. So it rides, I love TKL knives riding horizontally because they're so discreet. And uh, the thin handle is uh, designed to give you a full four finger grip, whether you have uh, medium sized hands like me or you have giant hands, uh, it will fill in here beautifully. And then of course you've got uh, room for your thumb on top and all the jimping you need. Uh, highly recommend this knife. Uh, no, I know how it sounds, but uh, it is an awesome knife. Uh, but all TKL knives are awesome. If this design isn't what you need, isn't what you want, doesn't uh, doesn't uh, stroke your fancy, go there, check out TKL knives, and man, they've got a whole bunch of really great and discreet fixed carry blades. That's their whole thing: discreet fixed blade carry kill knives all right ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for checking out these 12 great discreet fixed blade knives for utility and or defense and i must put the and or the end because of course they could all be used for either none of these are so specialized that they wouldn't work uh some more some better than others but uh let me know what you think and do you have any of these kind of knives that you prefer uh small fixed blade knives that do the trick in a pinch all right. Thanks for joining me. Be sure to join us tomorrow night. If you're watching this as it drops for Thursday Night Knives, check us out any other Thursday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here. Also, uh, join us on Sunday for a great, great interview. Um, they're always eye-opening and knife, knife makers are the coolest people. All right. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.